by the uh, the weight of the of the cargo, not by the cargo that's actually being shipped, which is essentially how it should work and how net neutrality ought to work. Um, you shouldn't care as a t- uh, as an ISP what I'm accessing. You should care how much of it I'm accessing, uh, and it shouldn't be any faster for me uh, to access your content than it is for me to access your competitor's content um, or for me to access content that you are, you know, trying to get on the ground floor of. Like, it, it's just, it's really heartening to see that the CRTC uh, is actually, like, after, you know, I, I actually, like, you know that um, on this day function on Facebook? Recently, it's been all about uh, usage-based, usage-based billing for me. Um, I was uh, I was really against usage-based billing because, um, uh, you know, just to give you a little background on that, it would be that uh, you get billed for, like, the amount of broadband that you're using um, rather than uh, uh, an unlimited uh, unlimited access sort of thing. So it was literally going to put Canadians at a disadvantage in terms of, uh, in terms of being able to ac- access media, you know, your, your, your ability to access like Netflix was going to be severely curtailed uh, because if you're trying to stream an access, uh, stream and access Netflix at, at high, uh, high fidelity at, at in HD, uh, HD resolutions, um, that's going to cost you a pretty penny if you have to pay for every single uh, every single gig that you stream, which is ridiculous because, of course, it costs nothing um, realistically to push that data across the uh, across the tubes, as it were. Um, so it, it's nice to see uh, these years later that the CRTC is coming down on the right side of net neutrality, as far as I can see it, anyhow. Um, and just you know what like honest honest god kudos um what i would recommend that you do though is uh is do take a look at the crtc website um i'll throw a link to the interventions page um in the uh in the show notes today and uh you can take a look and uh and maybe throw in your own intervention um i know that i'm going to be looking at doing it myself so uh that is that about the CRTC. Quick little sting about music, swing of music, and we're going to talk about Star Wars. More Star Wars. Very exciting. Brand new one, actually. I just downloaded this one from uh, from Montblazier's sites. This one's called Disco Cat. I love it. You know what else I love? Um, other than Patriots Tears. Um, again, I'm not I'm not a football fan. I just enjoy watching the Patriots not do well. I'm just I, I'm not a fan of Tom Brady. Um, but speaking of the Super Bowl, during the Super Bowl, we got the trailer. For Solo, a Star Wars story, and it looks amazing. Of course, it's a trailer. Um, don't really know anything that much about it from uh, from the trailer. All that we know so far is that it's, you know, a young Han Solo, which we kind of knew that already. Um, he definitely seems to be sort of very much has the sort of, uh, you know, classic Han Solo sort of vibe to him. Um, just absolutely fantastic. Uh, Donald Glover looks like he's having a blast playing Lando, uh, in the few shots that you get to see of him. He just looks so much like he's just, he, well, he looks like Billy D. Williams, just the way that they have him dressed and everything else. Like, it's just, it's wonderful. Um, and uh yeah it just it looks like it's going to be just a like a swashbuckling like space pirate tale where you know he's Han Solo is going to be the you know the 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 reluctant hero and i absolutely cannot wait for it uh memorial day this year may 25th um i will be uh you know keep keep watch on this spot i imagine that will be when i uh 
when I get the girlfriend on the show, because uh, we'll go see it together, and oh, I can't wait. Um, I think I may have mentioned this already on the show before, but like Star Wars has a really significant part in my heart. Like it's not just like I love it because I'm a huge nerd, which is true. I do love it, and I'm a huge nerd. Um, but it, you know, I was introduced to Star Wars um, by Clark. Um, when I was probably like three or four, uh, he showed me a new hope for the first time. And, uh, it's just, it's always been something really, really close to me as a result. Um, I've always absolutely loved it. Uh, even really loved the prequels for the first, like three times that I saw them. I'm not as big of a fan now. Um, I don't like crap on the prequels as much as everyone else does. I just think that it maybe could have been one movie, um, with like a thousand percent less Jar Jar. That that's really my only gripe with the prequels, is that uh, there was too much of it, and um, too much that could have been cut. Anyhow, uh, I enjoy the way that they're taking the Star Wars tale. Now uh, we're getting sort of the main story that's sort of feels like we're getting thrust into sort of the future with it. Um, you know, we're getting to getting sort of the present day story, the new stuff, but we're getting all along the lines, all of this little fill in material that's maybe not 100 percent necessary, um, but it's just absolutely wonderful, uh, wonderful information for um, for fans to know. I know that a lot of people were upset when uh, Disney took over the uh, the franchise and you know changed what uh, what was considered to be canon. Um, if you don't know, when when Disney did uh, did take over Lucasfilms and did take over Star Wars, uh, they sort of took the extended universe stuff and just sort of said, yeah, that doesn't count anymore um, for us going forward. Going forward, we're gonna have our own stories. Um, honestly, I think that's the way that, to do it. Um, and I think it was a smart thing for them to do, uh, just because if they decided to just try and make a theatrical version of the sort of post, uh, original trilogy, uh, books and stuff, they're going to mess things up and it's not going to be the same thing. So you might as well just say like, okay, that, that was all one sort of idea of how the timeline can go. Here's what we consider to be canon. And frankly, they're the ones who own the property now. They get to decide what the canon is going forward. Um, I had some good memories of reading some of those books when I was a kid. Um, you know, of, of Han and Leia's kids. Um, and, uh, you know, Luke being sort of the old wizened Jedi master. But, uh, oh man, this this movie. I try So I try and keep myself to one trailer uh, when it comes to the Star Wars movies. I try and keep myself um, as spoiler-free as I possibly can be. Um, and generally speaking, for the type of fan that I am, they do a pretty good job of just saying, like, okay, so here's what the movie's going to basically feel like, um, and you're going to have a sort of sense of what the plot kind of is going to be, sort of the, the what the story might be about, but we're not going to give away the farm here. Um, so now it's just a question of, uh, keeping myself, uh, bereft of any spoilers going forward, which always gets difficult because people want to, uh, give you that hot scoop. Speaking of hot scoops, um, this week also, also, uh, found out that, um, the guys behind, uh, game of Thrones are producing some star Wars movies as well. looks like they're going to have their own trilogy. Of films that are going to divulge away from sort of the Skywalker um, solo clan, you know, family, and uh, look at you know other pieces of the galaxy. So maybe it's going to be a little bit less about uh, less about Jedi's and more about uh, more about what the uh, what the fight, what the, the actual Star Wars look like elsewhere in the galaxy. Maybe there are other Jedi's though. Like you don't know. Maybe there's other force sensitive people who are starting to uh to pick up on um on the you know the goings on around around the galaxy in terms of the in terms of the force and maybe they maybe they run into uh into other Jedi through, you know, the force projection ghosts. And maybe maybe we'll have more Jedi 
Although, I don't know. It's it's interesting. I I, I kind of like that the the Jedi Order is, and the uh, the Sith Order are just down to just Rey and uh, and Kylo Ren now. Um, I don't know. Interesting to think about, but uh, definitely exciting. Definitely can't wait for. I, I you know honestly I kind of forgot that we were getting a Star Wars movie this year. I thought that uh, I thought that uh, Solo was another year away, and uh, lo and behold, that's going to be the uh, the first summer blockbuster for me. Um, insofar as May is summer, I guess. Um, so you know what? Really exciting. Really looking forward to it. And you know what else I always look forward to? Letters, emails from you. So right after this, I know this is the Cheers and Gears music. I'm going to just start using it more often. Um, Right after this, a little musical interlude. We're going to wrap up the show uh, with a letter from from my buddy Cameron. He's got some things to say about last week's uh, bell rant. And um, so we'll read his email. We'll, uh, We'll get to that. So, uh, as I always say at the end of the show, you can always reach us, reach us, reach me. Um, I guess I sometimes show the emails to my girlfriend before I read them on air, but um, you can always reach me at uh, on the show at uh, johndulongshow at gmail.com. Of course, I always read the emails, and uh, usually they'll, they'll make their way onto the show in some form or another. Uh, and this week, we got an email from Cameron. Uh, Cam writes... Hey, John, first, I should say congratulations on making a great podcast. I've only had time to listen to a handful of episodes, but I like where you're going with it. You've got a great casual conversational vibe that works well. I hope there are many episodes yet to come. Well, I'm doing it every week, man. So honestly, it's at this point, it's a uh, a weird vanity project where, uh, you know, I'm just uh, it doesn't it doesn't even matter. I'm just talking into the void. Um, I'm really enjoying doing this. So he continues, I'm emailing in in response to your rant about Bell Let's Talk. To put it bluntly, I disagree a little bit. But before I get into the substance of that, I feel I should point out my relevant observation that we seem to have wound up on opposite sides of an intra-left political divide that has emerged in the post-Brexit Trump era. Which is fair. Um, I've wound up pretty solidly on, in the Democratic Socialist Bernie would have won camp. While, from what I can glean, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're a little bit more in the mainstream liberal camp. I think that that's largely fair. Um, I'm going to keep on going with your with your letter here, Cameron. Um, I'll, 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 I'll chime in with um, with where we differ. I think that you're um, you're largely on the right track with my uh, with my particular sort of ph- philosophical leanings, but um, I. <sighs> I sympathize with the uh, with the Bernie Sanders would have won type crowd. Um, And, you know, I have some Democratic Socialist leanings myself. Um, I think that I do tend to land a little bit more on the traditional liberal side of things, though. Uh, Small L liberal, I should say. Um, So it continues. Uh, I don't want to have that argument here, although I think we're good enough friends that we could probably have a productive discussion about it. And hey, Cam, maybe maybe sometime if we can work out the uh, the time difference, maybe we'll have a, a worthwhile conversation on this podcast. You've always been an interesting dude, good friend. Um, but I'm pointing it out because I think some of the philosophical disagreements at the core of that also go to the root of the debate over Bell's mental health efforts. To put it simply, I think the left is increasingly getting frustrated with the notion that the phrase good corporate citizen can ever be anything other than an oxymoron. Do corporations sometimes do good things when it's in their own interests? Absolutely. Your point about $5 million not being chump change is well taken on this point. But recent events, such as the Volkswagen emissions scandal, revelations about labor practices and race relations at Elon Musk's companies, and to to add some Canadian content, Loblaw's 